You know what? It's been a little while. Let's recruit. Desire to predict the future. Ah, she wants a crystal ball. Okay, I can do that. I even still have the happenstance oil, which is the hardest part of that. Ah, yes, and I would just use this Eye of the Flugel to get home very quickly. Now, let's see here. If I recall correctly... Uh... Yes, there we are. Crystal Ball to see the future. That needs Central White, and that needs Sphere Gold and Happenstance. So it needs a Gold Ingot. Yes. Just need to swap out my circles. And I do believe that this ritual must be performed at night. Yes. Ooh, the crystal ball. I think that this thing is an item involved in summoning one of Witchery's bosses. Anyway, that stone circle that I found the witch at was at about 500, 1,000. It'll just take me a moment to fly over there. Here we are. And there she goes. And I believe that is my fifth coven witch. Yes. Five witches in the coven out of a total possible of six. So one more recruit, and we will have maximum coven power. Yes, I think that Eye of the Flugel will be staying in my bag. It is useful to have an immediate teleport home if you're doing something like scouring the world for coven witches. Now, the next step of making our gigantic battery is I am going to have to take... It turns out I, I made this tank thinking that I would be using liquid lithium for this, but no, it uses gaseous lithium. So it'll still be running off the gas line, and that buffer tank will just be, I don't know, a big buffer tank of liquid lithium. Which I guess is more compact than gaseous lithium, so maybe it is good to have that as storage. Anyway, what I need is a chemical crystallizer. Yes. Normally... Oh, personal chest. Nice. I think that's the second recipe I've run into to use that in this, of course. Anyway, normally... The crystallizer is part of mechanisms or processing chain. It's one of the final steps, I think. Of course I'm out of osmium plates. I'm always running out of something that runs off the slowest processing machines. I'm probably going to have to expand these to be more parallel processing. I can do that without taking up any more channels. Yes, there we are, the chemical crystallizer. I don't know why I'm making a pattern. I'm almost definitely only going to need one of these, because I'm not going to be doing mechanisms or processing, but... Well, I don't know. Just the principle of the matter, I guess. I'm going to need cable, and I'm going to need gas pipes. So, in this case, what the... Oops. I still have my potion of flight on. What 
what the chemical crystallizer will do is it'll take gaseous lithium and it'll turn it into lithium dust, which is what I need for these various induction recipes. Yes, this lithium dust here. So I'm just going to run the lithium tube a little bit ways over here. And I believe that, yes, that is the line that lithium should come in on. There it goes. And that's power sorted. And there it goes. This device, as you can see, is very slow. It is relatively power costly. It can take speed, muffling, and energy upgrades, though. Although, I'm not sure if it'll be set to hyperspeed or if it'll just be a 10x 10x. Let's see. Out of Mana Steel. I really should make a Mana Steel automation at some point. I mean, all I need to do is put a dropper over a mana pool with something to pick up just the mana steel, but I mean, eh, meh. I need it so infrequently and it's so fast to make it by hand. I mean, it's way easier to automate than the frickin' rune crafting. Ugh. But still. Let's put those energy upgrades in first. Okay, as always, energy is only 10x effect, meaning that right now it's only running for a tiny amount of RF. But let's see about the speed. Yeah, it looks like it's energy and speed at 10x, so it'll essentially be running 10 times faster for free. That's okay by me. Now, I'm not going to run any fancy ME lines over here and do a channel control on it or anything like that, because, I mean, I would have to run another P2P line in, or I would need to run the line in from somewhere else. So I'm just going to have this thing lever controlled, and I'm going to have it outputting, of course, to a melding mirror, so that, you know, just when I, when I feel that I have enough lithium dust, I can turn it off, and if I need more, I can turn it back on again. Manual control, it's fine. Likewise, this will give me more fine control if it turns out that I'm running through my lithium too fast and I'm, you know, messing up with my fusion. So, melting mirror. Give that its location. I'm really, really pleased with melting mirrors. Truthfully, I've never played much with Automagy before doing this LP other than using the alchemical boiler to get some hard-to-get essentias. But after figuring out how those crystal eyes work, I'm definitely growing very, very fond of it. Anyway, these things, I think they auto-output, so... Yeah, it has a stack of dust in there. Auto-eject on. There we go. So now we have lithium coming in. Oh yes, one thing to note. I moved a Ordo heavy node that I just found out in the wild down into the base and energized it. Because Thomcraft mirrors, they can only take in items at a certain rate before they start slowing down. Which is what those black particles are supposed to signify, I think. And to speed them up further, they need Ordo V. So, you see the sparks coming off of this thing. That is keeping my item input from backing up. And it can run at this speed pretty well, and I think it can actually run a little bit faster than this, but I'm still... If, if I have very many more things inputting into it, I might have to set up another mirror. A secondary item input system, yes. Anyway, 
First things first, let's make a whole bunch of induction casing. Doop. And that should be the first part of the quest. There we are. These induction casings form the outer part of the multi-block. Like, you build a box of these and that defines the shape of the battery. Kind of like tank sidings for railcraft tanks. In fact, this whole thing operates a lot like railcraft tanks, just for power instead of... instead of... liquids. And instead of empty space being what what uh, controls how much liquid it can hold, these induction cells control how much power the multi-block will hold. Each of these has a certain amount of capacity. You see that on the tooltip over there. And the more of them that... And, and you know, they, they all just... The multi-block essentially just binds them all together. And likewise, these induction providers determine the input and output rates of the multi-block, how much power it can handle sending in and out. With the ultimate being quite powerful, you'd only need like one or two... Well, I, I only need one of these for just the fusion reactor that I'm running. But still. Yes. And you see it's these induction cells that require the lithium. But only the first tier of them, so you don't need very much lithium, even if you're going for ultimate. Although, each, each layer is going to require more and more lithium, just because it's requiring more and more basics. Because you see it requires four of the previous tier each time. Mm. So, how much of these tier ones do I need to make just for the quest? Just one? Wow. This is an easy quest. Okay, let's do this port one first. That's relatively simple. The quest is calling for two because these act as both inputs and outputs. Oh, but we, we get two just from one craft. Huh. And does that count? Yes, it does. I am going to need more of these basic control circuits. In fact, I might want to parallelize the production of these a bit more, because I am going to need thousands of these if I want to build a battery that's at all big. Eh. I guess I just won't build too terribly big. Sorry to disappoint. Yeah, and these providers are pretty much the same thing, just with control circuits. Mm-hmm. Okay, and that should resolve the quest. Yes, it does. And that... Well, let's see here. Yep, that is how the world enhances. Done. We are officially done with technology. We, we, we have finished science. At least in a formal questing type sense. I will just be off screening some resource grinding in order to get, well, get a bunch of stuff for these batteries built up. I'll talk to you in a minute. Okay, bad news, good news time. Bad news. My setup here with the chipset things did not work. You see, when these things run out of space to output, they just eject out into the world. So, yeah, having these things on redstone controls, it did, it did, um, technically prevent my storage from filling up, but it would just cause tremendous amounts of lag, and it would still be eating up power. Not too, not, I'm not concerned about the power, but I am concerned about the lag from hundreds of chipsets being ejected and constantly having to be tracked. So, the redstone controls on these are just off. As you can see, I have these... I, I have a collection of cardboard boxes here, and when I feel that I have enough chipsets of one type or another, I just 
put it over the the assembly table, and that will keep it that will keep it from overflowing. Where did I hit this other logistical sort of? Oh yeah, I was I was assembling that for something else. So that's the bad news. I don't have fully automated chipsets anymore. I have to turn them off by hand. Good news is that since this is no longer relying on those channels, I now have four channels free. So I'm going to be parallelizing my my basic circuit boards. And that's what I have all this material in my inventory for. I just very quickly swapped out the old Buildcraft pump for a Everfull Urn over here. Oh yes, and I need some mechanical pipes. There we are. So, I have a total of six carpenters here. Oops. There we are, that's the power sorted. Now, I'm going to need to program them all using tin and redstone. Set these up to be the basic control circuits, or just the basic circuits. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to just fill up their inventory slots pre-programmed for tin and redstone so that when I, uh, when I switch over the provider system for them, they will remain full of all the necessary resources. I really wish I could tell a slot to only accept one type of item, you know, to keep a ghost item in there. I know some mods that do that, but I, I wish that there was like a mod that allowed all slots to do that, or that made an item that could lay down a ghost into a slot. I don't even know how that would work, but I wish it were. Well, that's, that's the recipe, right? Basic circuit board. I guess it just doesn't show the recipe until you give it the appropriate liquid as well. Inconvenient. Okay, there we are. They're all programmed up. Now, I just need to... You notice that I took the recipe out of this thing. Just need to kind of switch it over to provider mode here. And put a logistical sorter on it, and... And, and, and it does need a logistical sorter, because otherwise the pipes, the transporters, will only take one item from it. They always look to empty out the, the last slot of an inventory first. And because the last slot of this inventory will never be empty, it needs a sorter in order to do multiple items. Let's turn round robin on, just for the sake of things. Okay, and give that a minute to fill up. These things operate so slowly that it won't particularly matter. Actually, you know what? Hmm... 
I might want these output lines on the back so that I, or these input lines on the back so that I can have output on the top, which would be easier to route. Yeah, let's do that. Just need some microblocks covers to separate out these lines. Zalby. Ah! And another one on the top. And then just run it on over. And set these all to pull to sort the output. Okay. Input check. Output check. Everything full and primed. All it needs now is to be provided some water. Like I said. And there we go. Now all it needs is the control, which should be simple enough. I'll just get some red cable and an ME controller. ME level emitter, excuse me. And I can just run this right off the interface, because remember, they act like cables. And what I can do is I can put this right here, because I know for a fact that carpenters will stop working when they have nowhere to output to. Hmm. Okay, you shouldn't be connecting. That should force your connection to go off. Yeah, so these logistical transporters don't really like... Mm. Oh, and that's another problem, is the logistical sorter gets a little bit backed up because it doesn't know the proper sizing, so it tries to send through a stack at a time. Okay, let's, let's take you off for a second. Just let, those, let this whole cluster frack deal with itself for a second. Now, put it back on. And get it rotated the right way. Eh, I guess I'll just have to accept that this thing will be clicking constantly. At least until it stops. Hmm, and it looks like when it's sized that way, it can't keep up, so never mind. Hmm. Maybe I need two logistical sorters on this job. One for the tin, one for the redstone. Eh. We'll see if it jams up on its own. Anyway, let's, let's get this redstone control issue sorted. So... These redstones are so finicky. Okay, seriously, what's your deal? You should be shutting off. Okay, is it just a problem with this one? No, it's a problem with all of them. What the heck? It looks like, for whatever reason, redstone controls for mechanism pipes are not working right now. So, when I want to turn it off, I just, like, deconstruct this one pipe. 
that'll block the output, and that'll eventually... These things will fill up their output, and they will stop. But I'm not going to do that right now, because I'm going to need crap tons of these things. Let me, let me in fact show you something. Yeah, reconnect that there. Okay, so... I filled out all the recipes for these induction parts, right? And let me let me show you these induction providers. Okay, so so the elite induction provider, I think that's actually enough. Yeah, I, I think one million RF transfer rate would be enough, rather than this thirteen million RF. You know, it's it's a little bit overcooked. But let me show you what I would need if I wanted to craft one of these. I would need. On the order of 1,900 redstone chipsets, 600 iron chipsets, slightly more sane amounts of diamond and gold. I would need piles of plating. I would need about 1,000 enriched iron. I would need about 330 refined steel. Oh boy. It's a lot of materials. And it would need about 1,000 of these basic circuit boards. So, uh, yeah. And it's about the same for these induction cells. Although, no, I'm still short of the enriched iron for crafting these. So I'm just going to have to speed up my enriched iron production downstairs. Because it's producing. It, I, it's limited to, uh, I think, a thousand. Which, I'm actually going to have to boost that limit up because I'm going to want a couple of thousand of these in storage now. If I'm going to be crafting these things. I'm just going to have to speed this whole machine stack up and wait for a little while to get that crafted. Okay. So. Let's build ourselves a battery. You see that I have it laid out here. I'm just going to disconnect my fusion reactor for one moment. And you see on the bottom here I have these four ports. Because um, that way the cables can draw out about a half a million RF per tick in total with four connections. So, next I'm going to put one induction port right there. And the rest I'm just going to build up a square of casings. I'm pretty sure it accepts um, air blocks, induction cell blocks, and that's it. That's all that can be inside the interior there. And the casing has to be around the outer edge. And if I recall correctly, it has to be actually four tall. But once I seal it off, we should see this thing spark up. Yes, yeah, so there we go. You saw that lovely redstone there. And here we are. It is filling up with RF. Why no output? Do I have to configure these, these induction ports to be outputs? I imagine that would be done with the configurator. Aha! Yes, they turn red, and I imagine that if I had my chat on, I would see... Yes, toggle to output. There we go. So, our base is producing 200,000 RF per tick, and it is sucking down about 40,000 RF per tick, which is actually less than the cable could hold. It holds about 100... 130,000 RF per tick, so I was overestimating the need for the battery. But it's nice to have the battery. And this will be a buffer of about, I think, well, it only has the one induction cell in it, so it's going to hold 200 billion RF. And every single air block inside of that casing, I can fill up with more batteries, with more of those induction cells, once I get the ingredients for them in. So... This is a huge power bank. Induction cells, K 
can be made frickin' beastly. And again, this is a small one. This is what? This is 4x4x4? Four by four by four? They can be up to 18x18x18. 18 by 18 by 18. Yeah. Yeah, it can be huge. But it is also incredibly expensive. Even with only that one ultimate cell, this is probably going to be the most expensive machine I've built in this entire run. So... Ugh. That saga is over.